This morning, extreme weather across Wisconsin has led Governor Evers to declare a state of emergency. We'll show you how this weekend storms affected communities across Wisconsin. And Madison police are seeing an uptick in property crime, how they're asking residents to help them. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Monday, July 22nd. Good to have Leah back with us this morning, the gang all back together. Oh, yeah, lovely to be back, not only because I get to spend my morning with my best pals, but also because it's a beautiful morning out there. It is much easier to deal with the weather this week than last week. We had a break from the heat and humidity yesterday, and that's going to stick around all week. Take a live look from the Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam in Platteville. Sky's already clearing there, a nice sunrise underway. You may be noticing that the sun coming up just a little bit later each day. We're losing about 15 minutes of daylight each week. Here's a look at your temperatures this morning down to 62 in Madison, still at 66 in Platteville, 62 now in Platteville and 61 in the Dells. Temperatures should warm quickly today, though the air is very dry. We have dew points in the 50s and 60s, so you're not noticing any humidity. Take a look at those temperatures and winds over the next 12 hours. We're looking at highs in the upper 70s later on this afternoon. Very comfortable day ahead. Here's a look at your traffic reports. Looking at the roads here in the Madison area, still not seeing any major delays on the Beltline, but there are a few brake lights showing up as the uh, usual crowd gets going on Stoughton Road early this morning. Otherwise, the only thing to really tell you about is that there are some closures north and west of Madison and Crawford County. Uh, this is Highway 131 near Gays Mills and Soldiers Grove that is closed due to flooding. It's amazing to wake up on a Monday and not feel like you're having a hot flash when you get out of the car right away. What's that like? <laughs> what is that? It's been forever. So easy to breathe. Oh, finally. All right, Hattie, thank you. You're welcome. 602, your time now. There is an effort here in Madison to bring police and their neighbors closer together to help cut down on crime. It's called the Good Neighbor Project, and you can get involved tonight. Keely Arthur is live from the Midtown Police Station with the details. Good morning, Keely. Good morning. Yes, we all know Madison is a pretty safe place to live, especially by comparison, but there's always room for improvement. Now, MPD says they're seeing an uptick in what they're calling open garage door thefts. Basically, neighbors are accidentally leaving their garage doors open, essentially inviting thieves to come in and steal items. Now, Madison police don't want that to happen, and that is where the Good Neighbor Project comes in. Now, this is Madison Police Department's Community Safety Initiative. They say it's much more than just a neighborhood watch group. It's all about fostering strong relationships amongst neighbors so everyone can help one another out. And authorities say when you do that, you're actually better able to cut down on crime. Our patrol officers are great at responding to calls for service and they're very familiar with the city, but nobody is is as familiar with your neighborhood, your street, your house, your neighbor next to you than, than you than, and your neighbors. So having someone looking out for you um, is is huge. Now, to cut down on those open garage door thefts, Officer Tyler Grigg, who you just saw there, recommends something called a garage buddy. That is a designated neighbor who has your cell and can text or call you when you've left your garage door open or something else is amiss. It's a really simple way to prevent this ongoing issue. And tonight, right here at the Midtown Police Station, they're hosting an event called the Good Neighbor Night. Now, that's going to go on from 6.30 to 8. It's just going to be a place for neighbors to come together get to know one another and then talk to police officers about creating those really safe tips and ways to cut down on crime in their community. And even though this is on the near west side, it is open to any Madison resident hoping to make their community a little safer. Really great effort there. Keely Arthur reporting for us this morning. Thank you, Keely. 6.04 is your time right now. Governor Tony Evers is declaring a statewide state of emergency following extreme weather across the state. Down trees and power lines have caused major damage in northern and western Wisconsin. The declaration allows the activation of the National Guard to help local authorities with restoration efforts there. Governor Evers says he wants to make sure all state resources are available for them to help in the cleanup. In Appleton, neighbors have been working to clear a down tree that's been blocking off a road in their neighborhood after those weekend storms. Mariah Nadler and her boyfriend had been working for 45 minutes when a helpful stranger decided he'd chip in as well. I just pulled up around the corner. I saw a uh, whole tree laying in a road, people going at it with axes, and I felt really bad. Knew I had a chainsaw in the back of my truck, and there's something I could do about it. 
Together, the group was able to clear a path through what was left of that storm. That's what makes me happy to help because everyone working together, many hands make light work. So I love when everyone can band together like this and get, get a job done really quick, get the road flowing again. And that's really important to me. So if I can help out in any way, I'm happy to. Crews in Appleton had been working to get those roads cleared as quickly as they could, but with so much da damage and debris, people like Mariah and Brett decided to take it upon themselves to help get those roads back open again. There are still more than 20,000 customers without power in the Fox Valley this morning. We Energies has been working to bring the power back on after more than 100,000 homes lost power during Saturday night storms. The Milwaukee-based utility company says there were reports of more than 700 wires down, 50 power poles snapped, and more than 600 trees or branches that had fallen onto roads. Here in Madison, the power's back on for folks on the Isthmus following two fires at MG&E substations on Friday as the focus now turns to restoration and an investigation. The DNR is overseeing the cleanup and providing technical assistance. Their main concern right now is containing any materials released by that explosion. Things like transformer oil and runoff water that was used to fight the fire. More local news now. A 56-year-old woman is dead after a crash between a car and a bicyclist. The Dane County Sheriff's Office says it happened just before 4 p.m. Sunday when the woman didn't stop at a stop sign on County Highway PD and crashed into a Ford Escape. She was wearing a helmet at the time but died at the scene. The driver, however, wasn't injured. County Highway PD was closed for four hours between Timber Lane and Gust Road because of that crash. The woman's name will be released once her family is notified. A Wisconsin bike program is working to increase access to bikes for underserved communities in our area. Just Bikes Coalition wants to have more people get access to bike repair tools, increase bike usage, and provide youth internship and employment opportunities. The group says it sees transportation as a basic human right. And in order to be an active participant of this society, I think you need to get to places. I think that biking just got the right pace for uh, both transportation and for being an, uh, an active part of the environment. The coalition received a $30,000 grant from the Madison Community Foundation. They're also asking for support through donations or by voting for free wheeled bikes in eBay's 2019 Shine Award for small businesses. For more information on how you can help, head on over to channel3000.com. Happening today, the Madison School Board will decide who will fill the first vacant spot on the board in more than 20 years. The State Journal reports that 29 people have applied for that single open spot. Among those 29 are candidates former, that are former school board members, professors, and recent school district grads. Now, whoever is picked will only serve for nine months until April 2020. After that, a special election will fill the seat for the remaining year of Mary Burke's original three-year term. All right, to the nation's capital now. Negotiators are nearing a federal budget deal, but it has to go through a tight timeline to get approved. The Washington Post reports the budget would include few, if any, immediate spending cuts, and it would lift the debt limit to two years. Congressional leaders are working out the details, but any agreement would require President Trump's approval. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says the government could run out of money as early as September if the debt ceiling isn't raised. The House will recess next week, but the Senate does plan to remain in session an extra week to give more time for a vote and a president's signature. 608 right now, a motorcycle group is honoring area families of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. They made a pit stop here along their three-week journey. The tribute to fallen soldiers northwest is traveling from Eugene, Oregon to Arlington National Cemetery. Along their way, they're paying tribute to more than 60 families across the country, including three from our area. That includes Ray and Diane Maida of McFarland, whose son Mark died in Iraq back in 2005. They say it's always important to remember. We like to talk about him. Um, you know, don't, want, don't want people to forget the, the sacrifice that so many um, men and women have borne. The tribute to Fallen Soldiers crew will be in Washington, D.C. on August 4th, where they'll put out the flame that has been burning for their entire journey and lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Lovely tribute there. Mm -hmm. All right, 6.09 your time now. A local martial arts instructor has a role in one of the most anticipated films of the year, and he's local, folks. Just ahead, we'll get a first look into Mike Moe's experience and what it's like playing a childhood hero. 
And a high of 78 on this Monday may not sound too cool, but it's a huge relief from where we sat last week. Oh, yeah. Patty's detailing out this week's forecast. That's when News for Now This Morning returns. Good morning from the Hattie O patio. Much more comfortable to be outside this morning. Temperatures are falling through the 60s. Skies are clearing. And we have a beautiful forecast coming up. Take a look at the high temperature trend over the next 10 days, and you'll see that we undergo a slow warming trend through the week. Getting a little warm, though, by the end of the week into the upcoming weekend. For the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, highs should be in the upper 80s. Not as warm, though, as what we had last week. Normal highs are in the low 80s still this time of the year. Here's a look at Doppler track this morning. Overnight, we did have a few light showers pop up across southern and central Wisconsin due to a pretty weak upper level disturbance that's moving through the area. It has shifted off to the east, so the support for those showers has diminished and they fell apart pretty quickly. No more rain in our forecast for the day today. In fact, skies are already clearing behind that little disturbance. We're looking at plenty of sunshine this afternoon with high pressure and control of the weather. Take a look at temperatures across the upper Midwest. While we're in the 60s here, temperatures do drop into the 50s as you head into the Northwoods. We have 58 in Green Bay, 55 in Rhinelander. Superior this morning, a little cooler, starting off at 48 degrees. But in southern Wisconsin, it's a pretty comfortable start to the day. Temperatures are right around 60 in most spots. Dew points are around 60 as well, so it's feeling pretty nice outside. That dew point number is not expected to climb at all today, so staying very comfortable with those dew points in the middle 50s. Here's a look at your future track wind speed. A north wind this morning, a little breezy at times, but that wind will stay from the north around 6 to 12 miles per hour as we head towards the afternoon, just reinforcing the dry air that's already in place across southern Wisconsin. 
Your future track forecast model is showing you a little bit of rain on the uh, map. That was uh, the shower that we had overnight, but it has fallen apart already. So the model holding on to that rain a little bit longer than necessary this morning. Temperatures should climb back into the low 70s by lunchtime today. We're headed to highs in the mid and upper 70s, though, across southern Wisconsin with plenty of sunshine. Should be a very comfortable evening as well. If you have outdoor plans, the weather should not impact at all. We're looking at temperatures in the low 70s at 7 o'clock, dropping back into the 60s by 10 p.m. Here's a look at your extended forecast then. We have highs right around 80 on Tuesday. And that slow warming trend continues through the week with highs back in the mid 80s by Friday. Nothing but sunshine though in the forecast through this week. Next chance for rain is late Friday night. Now let's get a look at your first alert traffic maps this morning with Josh Tim. Good morning, Josh. Yeah, it's a quiet start so far on the Beltline this morning. Really nothing to slow you down heading in either direction at this point. Other roads here in Dane County, not looking too bad either. Just plan on an extra minute if you're heading northbound on Verona Road and Stoughton Road approaching the Beltline ramps. No delays downtown around the Capitol and on campus. Look for things to pick up over the next hour or so. And other main routes heading into the city, they're moving along at the usual speeds with no major issues. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Josh and Hattie, thank you so much. Trending now, ASAP Rocky is in an ongoing investigation for aggravated assault in Stockholm, Sweden. ASAP was detained on July 3rd along with his bodyguard and two other members of his entourage in connection with the fight on June 30th. Over the weekend, President Trump tweeted saying he, quote, just had a very good call with the Swedish Prime Minister and was assured that ASAP Rocky was receiving fair treatment. The president also offered to personally vouch for rapper's bail. The biggest thing on social media was a huge announcement for Marvel Studios at this weekend's Comic-Con in San Diego. Marvel president Kevin Feige made the presentation everyone was waiting for at Comic-Con, phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Announced titles included movies for new sets of characters like Shang-Chi and Blade and also so highly anticipated sequels including one for Thor, which brought fans to their feet with that announcement that Natalie Portman will be playing a female version of the Norse god. Love that. All right, speaking of the Avengers, they defeated their greatest enemy over the weekend at the box office, that is. <laughs> Avengers Endgame is now the highest grossing film of all time. The 22nd film in the Marvel Universe finally upset James Cameron's 2009 blockbuster, Avatar. The new number to beat, $2.9 billion. That's how much that movie's raked in now. Avatar had hit the previous record of just under $2.8 billion. It is an exciting week for one Wanakee martial artist. This Friday, Mike Moe makes his major movie debut in the latest Quentin Tarantino flick, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's taken years of work in acting and martial arts to play one of his idols, Bruce Lee, alongside actors like Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Margot Robbie. He spent months immersing himself in Lee's unique fighting style and mannerisms, but Mo really started his preparation much earlier in life. What kind of kid that watches a Bruce Lee movie doesn't get up on his feet and, you know, act out the movement? So, you know, I've been preparing my, my whole adolescence for this. Mo's passion is split between acting and teaching. Tonight, Danica Lewis will take us through Mo's journey to the big time, the ups, the downs, and the lessons he's been passing along to the next generation. Don't miss Wanakee's very own movie star on News 3 Now at 10. What's so impressive about this is he's not just an actor, he has to be an athlete as well. That's incredible. I mean, that's that takes, takes some hard work. And right here in our own backyard. So cool to see. I'm looking forward to seeing that story tonight. You and me both. All right, 618 right now. There's only about a third of the season left, and the Brewers are making a run for the first in the NL Central. We'll tell you how they wrapped up the series in the desert and why they may be without an all-star pitcher for the next few weeks. That's coming up. And Hattie, she's knocking it out of the park this week with yes. her forecast. She's talking about a gorgeous stretch of days, starting with that right there, that beautiful sunrise on your Monday. Keep watching News 3 Now this morning.
622 on a Monday morning and a beautiful Monday, finally. Yes, unlike last week where temperatures were just unbearable all week. Speaking of bears, the polar bear <laughs> doing laps already this morning. Probably a much happier polar I bear this week. I would imagine. Oh yeah, much happier Leah and Josh. Yes. Yeah, everyone is everyone. liking these temperatures and we have several days to enjoy the nice weather as well. Take a look over here. Our current temperatures this morning, we're at 62 here in Madison. So still dropping just a little bit. 66 in Janesville. Juneau is at 62 degrees. Mineral Point and Platteville, you're checking in with 63 this morning. Dew points though, we talked a lot about these numbers last week and they're much more comfortable. Dew points have dropped below 60 in many spots this morning. So you're not even really noticing the humidity today. Take a look at your forecast as you step out the door. You'll definitely want the sunglasses. If you're seeing any clouds right now, they will clear. Temperatures will warm gradually through the day. We're topping in the upper 70s later on this afternoon. Nothing but sunshine in the forecast today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Hattie. So Christian Yelich got to sit out at yesterday's game for the Brewers. A 337 average and 35 homers will get you a day off every once in a while. Ryan Braun was also out, but he had a sore back. Turns out the Brewers didn't need either one. Tyler Saladino hit a grand slam in the fourth to tie the game at four. Then Mike Moustakis delivered the go-ahead hit in the eighth for the Brewers. Josh Hader closed the door in the ninth, and the Brewers took a 7-4 win back home. They'll face the Reds tonight at Miller Park. While the Brewers inch closer to a division lead, they'll have to get through the next couple weeks without their best pitcher. Brandon Woodruff had to leave yesterday's game in the fourth inning with a strained oblique. Manager Craig Council says Woodruff will get an MRI today and head to the injured list. The Brewers are now just two games behind the Cubs in the NL Central after Chicago lost to San Diego yesterday 5-1. The Cubs took a one to nothing lead in the first, but weren't able to score after that. Next, they're heading out west to start a series in San Francisco tonight. It's not going to be an easy trip for them, though. The Giants have won 15 of their last 18 games. The 71st USGA Girls Junior Championship is set to start today at the Century World Golf Course in Stevens Point. Officials there are looking forward to the economic impact from the event, which they say has the potential to boost the local economy. They're estimating that each family will bring in around $1,000 for the week with people coming in from around the country and really across the world. 156 girls are set to tee off today and 12 countries will be represented. The winner automatically qualifies for the 2020 U.S. Women's Open Championship. All right, 625 this morning. Still ahead, we've got the top three things you need to know before you walk out the door this morning. And Keely Arthur is live to talk about how we can do our part to help cut down on crime in our neighborhoods. She's going to explain when News 3 Now This Morning returns. MG&E.
from the Channel3000.com Alert Center. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, folks, and thanks for waking up with us on this Monday, July 22nd. Hattie is serving us up a well-deserved, beautiful start to our work week, right? That's right, yeah. A lot of clouds in the area right now, but trust me, they are clearing. We have sunshine and comfortable temperatures today. Already feeling good out there this morning. Looking oh, yeah. forward to that, Hattie. We'll get to you in just a moment. First, let's get to the top three things that you need to know this morning. First up, President Trump is still taking shots at the squad. Yesterday, Trump had a new message for them saying, quote, I don't believe the four congresswomen are capable of loving our country. Republican leaders insist the president is focused on the women's politics, but member of the squad Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says she believes the president is trying to divide the public. The second story we're following for you this morning. Governor Evers is declaring a statewide state of emergency following extreme weather across the state. Downed trees and power lines caused major damage in northern and western Wisconsin. That declaration will activate the National Guard to help local authorities with restoration efforts. Governor Evers says he wants to make sure all state resources are available to help in that cleanup. And rounding out the top three this morning, there are still more than 20,000 customers without power in the Fox Valley right now. We Energies has been working to bring the power back after more than 100,000 homes lost power from Saturday night storms. The Milwaukee-based utility company says there were reports of more than 700 wires down, 50 power poles snapped, and more than 600 trees or branches that had fallen onto roads. So to the top three things for you to know on your Monday, Hattie's keeping an eye on what we need to know weather-wise. Hi, Hattie. Good morning, Lee and Josh. A much easier week to deal with the weather this week. Take a live look from the WICTV Skycam. There's that bit of cloud cover over downtown, but the sun is climbing above those clouds this morning. Expect mostly sunny skies as you head towards your afternoon. Temperature have probably hit the bottom in most locations. We're at 62 here in Madison, 61 in the Dells, 63 in Mineral Point and Platteville. A nice steady climb today. There will be a light north wind. We already have that wind in place this morning. We're looking at temperatures climbing into the upper 70s by this afternoon. Very comfortable though with low humidity levels. Here's a look at your first alert traffic maps. We'll see what's happening in and around the area. It is starting to get a little busier on Stoughton Road as you approach the belt line. So look for some brake lights there. No other issues in Madison. Still showing some road closures up in Crawford County. This is on Highway 131 right around uh, Gaze Mills and Soldiers Grove. Be aware of those closures due to flooding. And that's your first alert traffic. All right, thank you very much, Hattie. Breaking into the Channel 3000 Alert Center within just the past few minutes here, Equifax will pay $700 million to settle a 2017 data breach that exposed the private information of nearly 150 million people. Up to 425 million will go to the people who were affected. That Equifax hack was the largest in U.S. history, exposing names, social security numbers, and addresses. All right, to our other top headline this morning. When it comes to curbing crime, we often rely on our local police force. But you can also do your part in fighting the wrongdoing in our community. Keely Arthur is live from Madison's West Side to share how. Hi, Keely. Good morning, Josh and Leah. So in the summer, Madison police say they do see more crime simply because more people are outside. What they're seeing right now, though, especially is an uptick in what they're calling open garage door thefts. People are accidentally leaving their garage doors open, essentially inviting thieves to come inside and steal items. Now, Madison police say this could be cut down in half if people simply had better relationships with their neighbors. And that's where something called the Good Neighbor Project comes in. Now, Madison police department has this as their community safety program. Police say it's much more than just a neighborhood watch group. It's all about fostering strong relationships amongst neighbors and authorities say when you do that, you're actually better able to cut down on crime and everyone can learn about this project tonight. The police are hosting what they're calling what else good neighbor night at Midtown's police station. This good neighbor night mostly is going to be about other neighbors talking about what they're seeing in their neighborhoods, how they've gotten involved in good neighbor projects and what they are doing currently in their particular neighborhoods to make it more safe for everyone to live, work and play. 
Officer Tyler Grigg, who you just heard there, says to cut down on crimes of opportunity like these open garage door thefts, you can get something called a garage buddy. Now, this is a designated neighbor who has your cell phone and can text or call you when you've left your garage door open. A really, really simple way to prevent an ongoing issue. And again, Good Neighbor Night is taking place right here at the Midtown Police Station from 6.30 p.m. until 8 o'clock tonight. Any and all Madison residents are invited to come here, get to know their neighbors, and talk to police about really, really simple ways that everyone can make Madison a bit of a safer place. All right, Keely Arthur, and a really cool initiative here in Madison. Keely, thank you. Still ahead here this morning, one Wisconsin couple can't contain their joy for the new home they're building out of recycled materials. We'll explain that pun coming up here <laughs> in just a moment. But first, a recall from Target could have an impact on how you pack your lunch today. We'll have everything you need to know to keep your family safe. That's when News for Now This Morning is back. Live look at 637 on this Monday. Look at those broken clouds, a little sunshine, cool Heavenly. temperatures. Yes. Heavenly is what they call that. We needed this. This is like some much needed relief, I think, for most folks that don't like the heat, right? And it's sticking around for a while, too. Hattie's going to talk about a stretch of sunny, cooler days ahead. Yay. We will get to her in just a little bit. Good news. All right, it's the time of the morning when we always ask you to share your morning with us. And Kevin is a repeat offender of wow. beautiful photos. Just another gorgeous one. This one's overlooking uh, the river out in Argyle. That is incredible. Just look at the colors, the reflection. We were talking about how beautiful that reflection is. Looks like a painting. Nietzsche, right? Nietzsche is right. Thank you so much <laughs> for sharing, Kevin. If you've got a photo that you'd like to share with us, please do so. This is Lee and I's favorite 
part of the morning, being able to see your morning with us here. So you can do that by sending the photos at Channel 3000's Facebook page. All right, to the east side of Madison now. Shops are getting ready to open this week as construction on the revamped Garver feed mill continues. The old sugar mill is now 113 years old. 11 tenants will occupy the space, including retail shops, a yoga studio, and a few restaurants as well. Ian's Pizza is planning on holding a trial run tomorrow with a soft open scheduled for Wednesday. General Manager Adam Nagy says it's surreal to see the project finally done after five years of planning. It's not a mall, it's not quite a public market, but it is a common space and there is going to be a lot of shared seating for, for people from each you know, whether they go grab a cup of coffee or they go to the vegan restaurant, there'll be public seating both inside and outside. What a neat looking historic building. Gotta check this out. The restaurant was planning to open yesterday, but couldn't get inspections done on time after Friday's power outages. Restoration on the Garver feed mill started back in late 2017. On the consumer watch this morning, before you pack your lunch for work today, check to make sure what you're eating isn't impacted by this latest recall. Sandwiches and salads sold at Target and Fresh Market are being recalled over listeria concerns. The FDA says elevated foods brands, Archer Farms and Frescat are the ones to look out for. For both brands, look out for the egg salad and Frescat's tuna salads and Thai lobster salads. Those are the ones that are affected. You can also bring back any of the recalled food in your fridge and get a full refund. So far, no one has gotten sick. A couple in Grafton is building their dream home entirely out of shipping containers. For the past six years, Kevin and Amy Plato have owned their property on Green Bay Road on the Milwaukee River. They saw photos of shipping containers online and decided that's what they wanted to use to build their new home. We want something that's contemporary. We want something that's different. We've been searching for a home for a long time, um, even before we bought this property. And once we saw the shipping container, we were like, wow. And we both loved it. The 1800 square foot house is made of six shipping containers and has an open floor plan and large picture windows. The Plato's broke ground in May and plan on moving into the home in September. Pretty contemporary. That is really cool. Pretty beautiful views too with those floor to ceiling windows overlooking the river. Oh, beautiful home, beautiful Wisconsin. Absolutely. All right, 640 your time now. Hattie's giving us five straight days of sun with no rain in sight until the weekend. Oh, we deserve this, folks. She has an updated look at that extended forecast next. Yeah, look at that. Barrett was swimming a little earlier. Oh, Looks perfect like day to do take, that. Too. Oh, there he is again. Hi, buddy. Taking advantage of that. <laughs> As we go to break, if your little kid is turning three soon, please let us know so we can show their picture on TV. Thanks for watching News 3 Now this morning.
little cloud cover to start your Monday over this beautiful, beautiful city that we live in. But, Handy says, those clouds are not going to be long lived. I feel like I will take a little cloud cover just with the cooler temperatures we're experiencing this morning. Heck yes, five straight days of cooler weather. Hattie, we appreciate you. Yeah, not a lot to complain about uh, in the forecast over the coming week. We have beautiful conditions. Take a live look from the WICTV Sky Cam. Again, just a little bit of cloud cover there. Sun is up. Sunrise this morning, 538. But you may be noticing that the sunrise is getting a little later each day. Here are some of the numbers we're looking at. Uh, 545 is when the sun rises in a week by a month from now sun rises after six o'clock. So we are losing daylight at a pretty rapid pace right now. About 15 minutes of daylight each week is what we're losing. We have about six hours to go though before we get to the shortest day of the year and that's a long ways away. December 21st. Now here's a look at Doppler track this morning. Overnight there were a few light showers popping up across southern Wisconsin, not adding up to much. The disturbance that was responsible for those showers has moved out of the area. So showers quickly fell apart. A long cold front stretching across much of the country is giving a broken line of showers and thunderstorms this morning for the region and those showers and thunderstorms will be moving away from us. It's that strong cold front that brought the relief from the heat and humidity to southern Wisconsin over the weekend. Now no airport delays right now showing on the map so if you are flying today looking good right now. Here is the forecast though there will be the chance for rain to the south and east. Places like St. Louis, Memphis, New Orleans all looking at showers and thunderstorms still unbearably hot in DC today with a high of 93 Atlanta tops near 90 as well. Relief will be coming though over the next 24 to 48 hours to the East Coast as well with those hot temperatures starting to heat up as well to the West 102 in Salt Lake City Phoenix as well topping at 110. Here in the Great Lakes region, though, we are very comfortable. Our heat wave has come to an end. Temperatures will top in the 70s and 80s in the region. Plenty of sunshine in the forecast as well, thanks to this area of high pressure that's really going to dominate the forecast over the coming week. Here's that cold front again stretching across areas south and east, moving away from us today. So no rain in our forecast. The uh, high dew points in the 70s are to the south and east of that front. Things are much quieter here with dew points dropping back into the 50s actually. Here's a look at your numbers this morning. These are current temperatures 61 in Boscobel, mineral points at 64. 62 here in Madison. Janesville's the warm spot with 66 degrees. Now, here's a look at your future track forecast model. Again, here's that little bit of rain that we saw overnight. This particular model holding on to that rain a bit too long this morning. Skies will clear though today, and you get the idea. Nice afternoon setting up. 70 by lunchtime today, climbing to highs in the upper 70s across most of southern Wisconsin with a light north wind. It'll stay very comfortable through the evening hours as well, with temperatures dropping back into the mid 60s by 9. Here's a look at your extended forecast. Really nothing but sun in the forecast through Friday. There will be a slow warming trend though back to mid 80s by Friday. Upper 80s for the upcoming weekend. That's when we see our next chances for rain as well. Here's our pet walk forecast. Oh. Bonds in Monroe. Look at those whiskers. Oh buddy. What a cute cat. <laughs> 77. Fonzie I'm sure will be curled up in his sunny spot today. I no love pet? That. No pet walk for Fonzie? He's taking a little walk today maybe? Maybe. I don't know. He looks like a house cat. I'm sure he'll be taking many naps today. I'm with Fonzie there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Addie. You're welcome. Stay with us. The morning sprint is up next on News 3 Now this morning. But first here's Tony Ducopel with a look at what's ahead at the top of the hour. Hi Tony. Good morning. Ahead on CBS this morning, Iran claims it captured nearly 20 CIA spies. We'll look into those new reports as pressure grows for U.S. allies to join an international maritime protection force in the Gulf. Plus, how online reviews you post could put you at risk of being sued. The protections you have and what's safe to write. We'll see you at 7.
651, time for the morning sprint with the most local news to get you started on your Monday. We begin this morning with a statewide state of emergency. Governor Evers made that declaration following severe weather across the state over the weekend. Down trees and power lines caused major damage in northern and western Wisconsin. The declaration activates the National Guard to help local authorities with restoration efforts. Governor Evers says he wants to make sure all of the state resources are available for them to help in the cleanup. There are still more than 20,000 customers without power in the Fox Valley this morning. We Energies has been working to bring that power back after more than 100,000 homes lost power after Saturday night's storms. The Milwaukee-based utility company reported more than 700 wire wires down, 50 power poles snapped, and more than 600 trees or branches that fell onto roads. More local news back in Madison. The power's back on for folks on the Isthmus this morning following two fires at mg &E substations in Madison on Friday. The focus now turns to restoration and an investigation. The DNR is overseeing the cleanup and providing technical assistance. Their main concern is containing what any materials released by the explosion, like the transformer oil and runoff water that were used to fight the fire. Madison police say they do see an uptick in crime during the summer months because more people are out and about. To help cut down on that, they're hosting something called Good Neighbor Night here at the Midtown Police Station. This is all about joining together with residents to help cut down on crime, and it's part of a bigger initiative called the Good Neighbor Project. Now, this is the Madison Police Department's community safety program. They say it's much more than just a neighborhood watch group. It's all about fostering strong relationships amongst neighbors, and authorities say when you do that, you are much better able to cut down on crime working together. And the heat and humidity are gone. We're starting out in the 60s this morning across southern Wisconsin. A very comfortable start to the day today. Take a look at our temperatures over the next 12 hours. By lunchtime, back to 70. Climbing to highs in the upper 70s with low humidity this afternoon. Thank you very much, Hattie. Breaking into the Channel 3000 Alert Center within the past half hour here. Equifax will pay $700 million to settle a 2017 data breach that exposed the private information of nearly 150 million people. Up to 425 million will go to the people who were affected. That hack was the largest in U.S. history, exposing names, social security numbers, and addresses. President Trump is still taking shots at the squad. Yesterday, the president had a new message for them saying, quote, I don't believe the four congresswomen are capable of loving our country. Republican leaders insist the president is focused on the women's politics, but member of the squad, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, says she believes the president is trying to divide the country. Negotiators are nearing a federal budget deal, but it has to go through a tight timeline to get approved. Congressional leaders are working out the details, but any agreement would require President Trump's approval. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says the government could run out of money as early as September if the debt ceiling isn't raised. The plastic straw has been at the forefront of conversations about damaging man-made pollution, but cigarette butts are actually an even bigger problem. An estimated 4.5 trillion butts are littered globally each year. There's a report saying cigarette butts make up 30 to 40 percent of all litter found in coastal and urban litter cleanups since the 1980s. Heads up, if your lunch came from Target, there are a number of sandwiches and salads under a recall for listeria concerns. The FDA says Archer Farms and Fresket are the brands to be looking out for. Those products include egg salads, tuna salads, and Thai lobster salads. You can bring back any of those recalled foods for a full refund. There are no reports of illnesses at this point. New this morning, five people were in the hospital after a multi-vehicle crash in Rock County over the weekend. The Rock County Sheriff's Office says it happened just after one yesterday afternoon at the intersection of Highway 213 and Highway A in the town of Magnolia. They say a truck failed to stop at a stop sign and hit two other cars. The people in those cars had to be cut out with the jaws of life. Three of the people taken to the hospital had serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The Madison School Board will decide who will fill the first vacant spot on the board in more than 20 years at their meeting tonight. The State Journal reports that 29 people applied for the single open spot. Among those 29 are candidates that are former school board members, professors, and de recent school district grads. Whoever is picked will only serve for nine months until April 2020. The Avengers have defeated their greatest enemy over the weekend. At the box office, that is. Avengers Endgame is now the highest grossing film of all time. The 22nd film in the Marvel Universe finally upset James Cameron's 2009 blockbuster, Avatar. 
The new number to beat, $2.79 billion. Avatar had just had the previous record of just under $2.8 billion. It is an exciting week for one Wanaki martial artist. This Friday, Mike Moe makes his major movie debut in the latest Quentin Tarantino flick, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Moe's passion is split between acting and teaching. Tonight, Danica Lewis will take us through Moe's journey to the big time. Don't miss Wanaki's very own movie star on News 3 Now at 10. Christian Yelich sat out of yesterday's game against the Arizona Diamondbacks, as did Ryan Braun, but it turns out the Brewers didn't need either one. They took home a win, 7-4. to four. He'll face the Reds tonight at Miller Park and are now just two games behind the Cubs in the NL Central race after the Cubs lost to San Diego yesterday. 6.56 right now. Let's turn it over to Josh Tim with a final look at your first alert traffic. Hi, Josh. Hey, guys. Starting to pick up on the westbound side of the Beltline. Just a few brake lights between Stoughton Road and Monona Drive. Inbound side of John Olin, you're tapping the brakes at Rimrock and then again at Olin Avenue as you move into the downtown Madison area and other main routes heading into the city. They're still moving along at the usual speeds right now with no major crashes or delays. Your first solar traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Josh, thank you. And it's a beautiful start to this Monday morning. Take a live look from the Edgewater Sky Cam. Sun shining on downtown Madison. Clouds clearing to the east as we speak. Here's a look at your day planner temperatures. We're going to see highs in the upper 70s this, this afternoon. Much cooler, but much more comfortable than what we saw last week. Oh, we deserve it, right? <laughs> we definitely do. Making it through last week was a chore. Thank goodness. Thank you, Hattie, so much. And thank you for joining us on your Monday. Have a great day. Enjoy that sunshine and that cooler temperature, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow morning.